Hi, I'm DJ Ware. On this episode of the Cyber Gizmo, I'm going to be talking about some changes that are going on with FreeNAS right after this. So as you probably know, and you're probably aware, or maybe you've heard, that FreeNAS is changing. It's going to merge into something called TrueNAS Core. And TrueNAS Core is an acronym for Community Supported Open Source, Rapidly Developed, and Early Availability. And the former, so you have TrueNAS before, and then you had FreeNAS. And those two entities are moving to form Core. The original TrueNAS is going on to become TrueNAS Enterprise. So, yeah, and those things uh, will move on down the line. Now, the first appearance of TrueNAS will be in 12.0, and my understanding that's slated for sometime this year. But the other thing that was announced was TrueNAS Scale. Now, FreeNAS and TrueNAS are both BSD-based, but TrueNAS Scale is Linux-based. And the 12.0 beta is currently in work, and it's available on their site on GitHub. So if you want to download it and play with it, you'll need Debian 10 for the beta. But TrueNAS Scale, according to my sources, say that it'll be based on Debian 11, and the release is planned sometime for next year. So... And the, one of the big changes, though, with TrueNAS Core is it will be supporting uh, OpenZFS 2.0. Now, if you remember, I did, a, I did a video a while back that was talking about the struggles that OpenZFS has had with trying to keep all of these pieces together. There's OpenZFS for BSD, there's ZFS on Linux, and then there's ZFS for Mac OS. And all of them have become kind of divergent in terms of how the code bases are maintained, what features are available, and even there's even, uh, you know, th what they refer to as Linuxisms that have crept into the code base for OpenBSD, uh, OpenZFS. So what is going on with OpenZFS uh, 2.0? So it's a, it's a goal to unify, first of all, Linux and FreeBSD. So the features set that is available to BSD will be the same as what's available on uh, Linux. At least that's what I have heard so far. Now, this, pro this work is still in progress, and there is a number of two key components that, aren't, uh, that are a bit unknown, whether they'll make it into the final release or not. But we'll find out uh, as things go. But... Uh, they're not planning to do anything with uh, OpenZSF for Mac OS, ZFS, for Mac OS until OpenZFS 3.0. I don't know when that project will be done. I, I haven't, I mean, they haven't started, so <laughs> they don't have any dates for it yet. But, uh, yeah, so the big push right now is to transition ZFS on Linux, or Zoll, uh, to open ZFS for Linux and BSD. So FreeBSD and Linux will be that one name. So it's one set of code that is put on both. Now, I don't know if you guys know this, but just a technical piece here that uh, Z, OpenZFS for FreeBSD is developed on it, on the compiler LLVM, and <laughs> Linux, of course, uses the completely uses the GNU C compiler. So yeah, they're completely different. Um, and I, th I don't know how they've worked that out, but hey, we'll find out as, as time goes by. <clears throat> the other thing is that we have TrueNAS Scale, and one of the features that are coming for Scale is that Gluster support is planned. Now, <clears throat> there's not a lot of details about what that means, but <clears throat> it does mean that... Um, I don't know if the ZFS will be the underlying storage back end yet. We don't know how performance is going to compare. I mean, this stuff is all in development. But... It might be something the way Proxmox supports Gluster and ZFS. I'm just, you know, there's too many questions yet, and there, there's very little code that's in there. Currently, it's a Python wrapper for Gluster, so I assume that that kind of brings in some of the pieces. But what is TrueNAS Scale? What really is it? So the acronym means Scale Out, Converged, Active Active, 
Linux containers easy to manage. So Linux containers don't have much detail on here yet. In fact, I looked at the code base earlier today and <clears throat> don't know what, I mean, I don't, there's people talking about Docker, there's people talking about Lexd. Uh, I just don't know yet what's, what's gonna transform there. But the one thing we do know is that there's no plans yet to extend TrueNAS scale to either Red Hat or CentOS. And so right now, or even Arch, there's no discussion about that. So right now, this is a Debian-based uh, system, <clears throat> at least at present. I do know <clears throat> from the developers that the Converged is talking about true con hyper-converged, which, which is traditionally means that it, it has pieces that support storage, virtualization, virtual networking, and compute on a single node. Uh, and that is in the true, nail, uh, the true NAS scale context. So <clears throat> that will be interesting to see. That's a pretty big change. <clears throat> this eye chart is brought to you by <laughs> what the shared features are. So yeah, so the, some of the shared features between the enterprise and the core are here, but that's kind of an eye chart and I'll kind of break down some of the other features for you. But you can see that, you know, that none of the features are lost moving across and none of the enterprise features I mean, there are some that are in, in uh, that are borrowing from core, but none of core's features are being lost. I guess is really the point here. So I guess the best thing to talk about first is that metadata on Flash. So <clears throat> so you can use if you can you can now have special SSDs uh, or VDUDs that we can use for metadata. Now, I've talked about this before that when you get into large file systems trying to search the file themselves. For data is really expensive and you really need some kind of metadata in order to be able to handle that. And so that's what this is referring to is the ability to set up metadata on Flash. Uh, you also have fusion pools uh, and that's based on the IO write size. Uh, I don't really have a whole lot of details about any of these things yet. So I don't really have a lot of details on any of these things yet, but well, as time goes by and we get closer to the release date for TrueNAS Core, uh, we'll, I'll post some updates to this as it goes along. So uh, also the SSD wear monitoring is good. I mean, and data set encryption. So specific data set sets can be selected or deselected for encryption uh, with a user provided key. Now. <clears throat> That, when replicating a data set to another true NAS, the key doesn't have to be provided so the data can be transmitted and stored in its original encrypted state. That was one of the problems that is preventing me from moving my <coughs> BSD-based OpenZFS over to Linux right now. And hopefully that will solve what I'm looking to solve and it'll help me get it over there. Asynchronous ZFS trim commands that frees up the empty space, of course, and uh, within SSDs. And so those will be done, I guess, asynchronously. <clears throat> Uh, faster ZFS boot, uh, more parallel processes for importing a ZFS pool with many drives. So, yeah, I, I don't know if you guys have, have ever done ZFS boot on BSD or not, but yeah, it kind of scales, it kind of ratchets up and goes, this drive, it pulls up, then this drive pulls up, and this. So, hopefully, yeah, that'll solve some of that speed issue when you're doing a boot from a, a BSD. ZFS Linux compatibility are Linux and FreeBSD are now peer operating systems for OpenZFS 2.0. So you have compression, you have deduplication, you have encrypted data, and those can be replicated back and forth from Linux to FreeBSD. And that was one of the big problems. Uh, also, you can use one or the other as a backup and archive, which is that's pretty cool. Uh, also, and, and an important one is being able to import a drive. Now, I'm not sure if there'll be limitations on that because, you know, in, in the past, 
uh, importing a drive pool had to have certain feature selections turned on in order for it to work. So I guess we'll find out uh, as we get closer, but the goal here is to have compatibility between the two, and I would assume then uh, we would have to migrate the the, BS, the free BSD versions of uh, OpenZFS to two first, take care of the idiosyncrasies there, that, and then hopefully be able to move those back and forth between Linux. So I don't know what happens with legacy, whether I'm going to have to reload the pools. I don't know yet, but, but anyway, we'll find out, as I guess, as time goes by. Uh, accelerated ZFS, uh, several import, uh, performance features uh, for it to improve IOPS and reduce CPU cycles. So, <clears throat> yeah, higher performance, that's always a big win, right? Uh, open uh, VPN client and server. Now, I know one question that came up immediately after this came up was, all right, so you're going to provide VPNs for remote security, but what about WireGuard? And WireGuard is it actually already has, uh, ins there's a, well, I should say, I don't know if it's supported, but there's actually instructions on the IX system site for how to enable WireGuard on, on uh, FreeNAS 11.3. So you can already do that if you want. So, <clears throat> but anyway, let me get back over here. Um, also, two-factor authentication now is included, uh, will be included in, uh, I should say now, it's not out yet. Uh, it will be in TrueNAS uh, Core. Uh, so that's normally considered an enterprise feature, but it's going to be available to, uh, to us, us guys out here you know, on the home front, too. Nice. Uh, I'm API keys. Uh, so that what that allows you to do is you can you can enable services that are protected and revoke services and prevent them from being uh, accessed. So that's a nice feature, at least from a security perspective. Key management interoperability protocol is that's enterprise securing systems and data, uh, and through a centralized key management system. Eh, I don't know about that, but. Uh, I'm never, re I'm kind of iffy about centralized key management pools, especially what we've been seeing lately with Intel. Uh, also, uh, true command data set management. So it's, it's, it's uh, I guess this is going to allow us to do, you know, snapshotting, replicating, migrating data, data sets between different systems. So, uh, yeah, you can do that now. Um, one thing, I'm not sure what's happening here, but... The send and receive features have changed, apparently, with uh, OpenZFS 2.0. So I'm going to have to do some digging to find out what's going on here. But, you know, that ne neither, I mean, uh, I mean, neither one of those are really out yet. So here's some questions that the FreeNAS community had. Will TrueNAS Core be open source and free? IX System says yes. Will TrueNAS Core ever have fewer features than FreeNAS? And, and the answer from IX system was no. They're planning more features for true, Na, true, for true, uh, true NAS core than free NAS currently has. Uh, and then one, an important question, of course, will any free features be made available to true NAS enterprise? And no, IX system has no intention of removing features from true NAS core. So <clears throat> that's, that's good. You're not going to lose any ground by going to that. Uh, and I'm sorry I don't have a, a demo of this. I don't do beta code. And it looks like it's still pretty heavily in development with a number of key features still be, still pending. Uh, uh, and the answer is whether they'll be included or not. So I know it's a small talk today. Uh, I, I just wanted to cover this because I had started to see some information coming from other YouTubers on this, and it was a little confusing to me. So I went and dug into it, and hopefully it's less confusing now for you. It's still a little confusing for me. Uh, there's a lot of questions yet and a lot of answers. They just had a uh, one of their their quarterly summits today, so be interesting to see what what comes out of that and their in the talk about uh, what they're going to be doing with uh, the you know the future for TrueNAS as well as OpenZFS. Uh, also, it's kind of interesting to see that you know OpenZFS 3.0 will be included. I mean, the goal here is to have one set of OpenZFS code. So whether you're deploying this to Linux or uh, FreeBSD or to a Mac OS. Uh, this is the same set of features, the same set of code will work uh, going from one to another platform. And so you aren't in this current predicament where 
I have features enabled on my ZFS that I can't move to Linux. I can't move to FreeBSD, for example. So I think that's a very positive step. And of course, IX Systems is leading the effort, I think, on most of the open CFS stuff. And I commend them for their work on that and, and glad to see this is, this is getting done. Uh, it has been so badly needed for so long. So, hope you enjoyed this video today. And as always, if you did, please like and subscribe. Hope to see you again next time. Bye for now.